Hi, I'm going to show you how to answer an A-level biology question on the structure of the human gas exchange system. This question asks us for the gross structure of the human gas exchange system and how we breathe in and out. This question is in two parts then. The first is to describe the breathing structures and the second is to describe the breathing process. Describing the structure of something is fairly straightforward. It's even easier if we simply draw a labelled diagram like this. A picture, after all, is worth 10,000 words. I know what you're thinking. You can't draw. What about this then? No? OK. In that case, you just need to describe the main parts in order, starting with the trachea, which extends down through the abdominal cavity, before branching into two bronchi, which each branch into smaller and smaller bronchioles, before ending in tiny alveoli. We're only asked for the gross structure, not the fine structure, so we don't need to talk about cartilage rings, pleural membranes, alveolar blood capillaries or any of that, for example. The second part of the question asks for a description of how we breathe. Unless you're going to draw a series of diagrams this time, personally I would try and write this out in words rather than using those diagrams. Let's look at the process first with a series of diagrams before we start to describe what's happening. When we breathe in, our diaphragm muscle contracts and flattens downwards. The external intercostal muscles also contract. These are the muscles between each pair of ribs, the meat that some of us eat when we have a barbecue rack of ribs. The rib cage is pulled up and out. Feel it for yourself as you breathe in now. Feel your chest rise and expand. These two contractions cause the volume of the chest cavity to increase. As volume increases, air pressure inside the lungs decreases, below that of atmospheric pressure. So air is then pushed into the lungs from the outside. Most people think we suck air into our lungs, but we don't. What we do is we reduce the pressure in order to allow air to be pushed in from the outside. Breathing in is therefore an active process. It involves muscle contraction and therefore uses energy. When we breathe out, our diaphragm relaxes and is pushed back up into position by the stomach and the intestines that got pushed out of the way during inhalation. The external intercostal muscles also relax and therefore the rib cage falls back down due to its own weight. These both cause the volume of the chest cavity to decrease. As the volume decreases, air pressure inside the lungs increases above atmospheric pressure this time. So therefore air is pushed out of the lungs to the outside. Breathing out is therefore a passive process. It involves a relaxation of muscles. There's one more breathing process and that is when we forcibly expire. This is the birthday candle breath as I call it. It's also used when coughing or sneezing. <coughs> Here the stomach muscles and internal intercostal muscles both contract at the same time, pushing the diaphragm up and the rib cage down really quickly. This rapidly decreases the volume and increases the pressure inside the lungs, which pushes out air at great speed. The internal intercostals and stomach muscles are not often used since we only have birthdays once a year. We certainly notice these muscles being used though whenever we have a persistent cough. After a day of coughing continually, it becomes really painful, doesn't it? Just as it would if you suddenly went for a workout at the gym for the first time in years. So what are we going to write then? We've already got our diagram for the first half of our answer. Then we can describe the ventilation process like this. Breathing occurs as the external intercostal muscles contract. This pulls the rib cage up and out and the diaphragm down. The volume of the chest cavity increases, which reduces the air pressure inside the lung. So air flows down the pressure gradient. Breathing out occurs as the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm relax. This allows the rib cage to fall back down, decreasing the volume and increasing the pressure within the chest. Air is therefore pushed out. So that's it for now. Make sure you click the thumbs up on this video and subscribe for future videos like these.
Follow me on my social media for latest news and revision tips. Good luck with your revision. See you again soon. Bye-bye.